Hello everyone, hope you're all safe and well, and welcome to another video. So, exciting evening ahead for me tonight. Half seven now and I'm gonna to head to the track for around 8 p.m. for a one mile time trial. So, for those of you that have been following along with my training for the past month or so, you'll know that I've been training to squat 500 pounds and run a five minute mile in the same day, which is proving challenging. Who would have guessed, eh? It's not been done before, so this is obviously going to be no small feat and the training is really taking a lot out of me. This week hasn't exactly gone to plan so far. I was meant to have a heavy squat in the morning yesterday and a mild test in the evening last night. Today's Tuesday. Yesterday was Monday. And I basically unracked 220 kilos yesterday morning and just knew it wasn't going to fly. You know when you just unrack and feels like 550 kilos in your back. It was one of those times. So I squatted 200 kilos as my last warm up set and that was the highest that I went yesterday. And it turned out that the wind was so strong yesterday that there was no point in me doing a mile attempt anyway. It got to about 28 miles an hour, 30 miles an hour. So would have been pointless and wouldn't have been a good test. So did my squat yesterday, didn't go to plan. Mile today, hopefully that goes to plan. So about to head off, but before I go, I'm going to weigh in just so we know what we're dealing with in terms of weight. I'm doing this now at half seven for two reasons. One, because this will be the actual weight that I'm running with, given that I've eaten some food and water, etc, etc today. And two, I forgot to do it this morning. So if you would like to come with me, I don't have a good feeling about this. Hmm. Okay, okay. So 93.2 kilos to shift around the track and around the 510 mark I'm hoping for. So today's basically gonna be a 95% effort just to see where my sort of outputs are at the moment. And then we're gonna try and set a date for me to try and squat 500 pounds and run a five minute mile in the same day. So see you at the track. All right, so after head banging my way to Slipknot the whole way here in the car, we are at the track. I'm going to get my spikes on, I'm going to get warmed up, and then I'm just going to run you through it. I'm going to show you my miles from start to finish, and I'm going to get Jamie to film the whole thing on the drone. So, a mile is 1,609 metres on a track, and one lap of the track is 400 metres. So I need to do four laps, starting from this line here, and then finish at this line over here because that makes it 1610 meters which is a track mile so i'll be starting there finishing here let's get to work three two one go all right so this was tough and it was meant to be 95 percent effort but it turned out to be probably closer to about 99 .9. So, very nice to have the track all to ourselves again and set off really, really well. First time in spikes since I was about 14 years old, and I'm a lot heavier. So they felt really solid, really light-footed, really grippy, and a bit different to being in the ultras that I've been wearing on the track recently. So, very encouraging start. Basically went out with the pacing strategy that I was shooting for 110, 110 first two laps, and then seeing where I got to then, knowing that the third lap would be the worst. However, I ended up hitting the first 400 meters in 107, which I think is probably an all-time PB for me. I would probably taper that a little bit back when I'm actually going for the proper mile attempt because that might leave a little bit more in the tank to push with at the end. So Jamie just had two by 800s today because he's sort of really just dropping off all volume in the knowledge that he can get this done. His deadlift's the last piece of the puzzle that we need to get him to, which is just dropping off the fatigue and upping the intensity a little bit. So as you can see here, first 400 with 107, which, yeah, I mean, I was feeling like a million dollars at this point. Potentially a bit complacent, didn't know what was coming next, which was a lot of pain. So everything was moving pretty, pretty well, and this is all pretty encouraging, and just comes down to the fact that I'm not that practiced on a track, in spikes, doing a full mile attempt, because it's something that I've kind of just been recently getting used to again. I've been doing a lot of sprint work, yes, but it's much easier to pace 400 meters, 800 meters, etc., just going full send and seeing what happens, rather than the actual mile where you've got to get that delicate balance between going fast enough that you're getting the time you want and not going so fast that you completely red line and have no energy to get you over the finish line. So, wind was pretty steady today. Where I'm at on the track now, it was a tiny bit of a tailwind, and then around the corner on the other side, it was a little bit of a headwind which was the exact opposite of the previous weeks actually, so a bit of a shock there, but nothing that gave me any assistance or really held me back too much, I don't think. 
But coming into the end of lap two here, I think this was 118 on top of the 107, so quite a noticeable drop in pace. But I think that was more me tapering things back in the knowledge I'd ran a 107 and thought, uh-oh, you're going out a little bit fast here. So still feeling pretty good at this point, but knowing that this is the worst lap, because for anyone that's done any sort of mile training, any sort of miles on tracks before, you'll know that this is sort of where it starts to really hurt but you're not actually near the end. So it's kind of like the bottom portion of a squat. If you unrack as, as it did for me on Monday, I unracked, started to descend and just thought, no, just stood up and put it back because I just couldn't see myself getting to the finish line on that one. But that's another thing to note is that squats on Monday was just a massive, massive build up of fatigue. I was so, so tired over the weekend. I basically got 10 hours sleep on Saturday and then fell asleep again on Sunday for three to four hours which is a pretty pretty big indicator of the fact that I've just been done in, probably needing a little bit more sleep, a little bit more just sort of relaxation over the weekends. I've been getting up at 2.30 in the morning the past couple of weekends to get to the sunrise in the hills in Scotland, which has been nice, yes, but potentially I might have to sacrifice the sunrise in the future for the sake of actually recovering from my sessions. So moving forwards, we basically just taped my volume off the rest of the week and then we're looking towards next week to just get me a bit used to that higher percentage weight so around the 210, 215 mark, just to get a really good feeling of where my squat actually is at the moment. I think I'm capable of 227, however I'm not confident that it's gonna go comfortably given that I haven't hit it in a while. So start of this process, I hit 220 for a really grindy single in Olympic lifting shoes, which has made things harder for me as I've noticed but now I've gone back to flats, which is what my strongest squat in the past has been, so I'm hoping that that will give me a bit more of a boost. Lap three there was around 118 again, I think, so pretty consistent, but it was lap four. This was, where, this was the point where Jamie started to think, actually, I don't think he's got a sub five in it today because I just wasn't getting any faster. I was, I was pushing as hard as I could. My gait hadn't really changed. I hadn't really shown any significant signs of fatigue in my lower body, but I was fried, to be honest. Simple, but that's, that's what happened and I was just trying to put the push that a little bit more but I just didn't have it in me so all the push that I gave was just to maintain pace to get me over the finish and that's where the sort of 107 first lap might come into play and a bit of a better balancing act in future attempts but the plan now is basically just to strip back all my volume and everything other than the squat and the mile really focus on that for the next week next two weeks next three weeks however long it takes just to see where I'm at then I'm going to set a date and I'm just going to give it a go if it happens it happens if it doesn't it doesn't Adam Klink in America is getting very, very close over in Chesapeake in Virginia. So it is a bit of a race to the finish, which is exciting, but also quite daunting because it puts that time pressure on it. So coming to the end here and yeah, 5.05, which is a PB I'm very pleased with. Uh. Uh. I think that last lap turned into 100%, not 95. Oh, lap three is just the worst. Right, so I think I was around 5.05. So, yeah. It's encouraging, but what a horrible reminder of how hard this is. Uh, tough stuff, just need to get my squat up that little bit more. Just got a bit of fatigue to manage next couple of weeks and I can't really go any further than the end of July, start of August to keep giving this a go because I've got a lot of endurance volume to build up for November. So, uh, I'm going to leave that there. That's the video, short and sweet. I hope you've enjoyed watching. If you have, make sure you've given it a like and that you've subscribed down below so you can keep following the misery that I put myself through. Whew. Ah, well, that's that then. Thanks again for watching. See you next time.